Okay, Bible and Daily Lifers, here we are. We're in the New Testament, and we are in the book of James. Now, um, I've missed a couple of days. I've had some upper respiratory thing going on and caused me to not do a couple of days. Sorry about that. We haven't missed too many, though. Missed a couple of days this year, so I think we're doing all right. So we're in the book of James, and the book of James is in some ways, it's like the New Testament Proverbs. James is like one thing after another thing, and each one of them seems to be hard-hitting. He's just hitting us right in the nose every single time with uh, each new topic that he comes around with. And as soon as he does one, then he's on to another one and on to another one. It's real good for us. It's a great book of uh, self-examination, seeing where, we are, where we're at, seeing where, where we're at with our faith, seeing where we're at with our lifestyle, uh, questioning us and causing us to look in the mirror, see who we are and see what we're doing. So let's move on with this uh, James, uh, the brother of Jesus, is what they say. Uh, chapter 4 starts with a question. Whenever there's a question in the Bible, you're supposed to answer it, rhetorical question. It's designed to get us to think. It's designed to get us to do some self-evaluation. Well, let's, uh, let's look at it. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Well, we have lots of fights, we have lots of quarrels, no shortage of those. Might as well try to figure out what we're supposed to do with them. How do we bring peace to these quarrels and these arguments and these fights? Well, then he asks, don't they come from the desires that battle within you? Well, if there's an outside battle, it's usually because there's an inside battle. Well, what's going on in that inside battle? Well, what do you know? The next verse he tells us, you desire, but you don't have, so you kill. You want things, you can't have them, so you kill. I guess I can take a lot of different applications. You know, this killing, you know, what is that we're doing? Maybe killing somebody's reputation, maybe killing their um, integrity, maybe questioning who they are, maybe killing them. You covet, but you can't get what you want, so you quarrel and you fight. You want it, something you want, you can't get it, so you quarrel, you fight, make a big tiff about it. You, well, what can we do? Well, it tells you right here. You don't have because you don't ask God. That's interesting. You don't have because you don't ask God. Well, maybe I should uh, ask God. He says, and then when you do ask, you don't receive because you ask with the wrong motives that you might spend what you get on your pleasures. Hmm. This reminds me of uh, something that's happened to me on numerous occasions. I'm, I've been, over the course of my life, on many boards, board of directors, for lots of different kinds of organizations, religious organizations, non-religious organizations, just been on a lot of boards. I don't know why, but I am. And, of course, I've been involved with church life and on the boards of many and various churches, and then, you know, even with the local church I'm involved with, there's always things you need to be doing, coming up with new concepts, coming up with new ideas, coming up with new vision, new strategies, all these kinds of things. So you're asked when you come to these board meetings, you know, you're supposed to be bringing something to them. So I can't tell you the number of times that I've had some really good ideas. And when I bring them to the table and I speak them out loud in front of other people, as soon as the words come out, my reaction is, that's like the stupidest idea anybody's ever had. Like, why would anybody bring forth an idea like that? Well, because you think about it, you think about it, you think about this stuff inside of yourself, and you start to, you know, make it bigger inside of your head. And then as soon as it's spoken out, you realize how silly it is, how foolish it is, how, you know, that, that's not the right word or the right idea for the time. That's why it's so valuable to talk to God. Because many of these things that we want in our lives, many of these things that we sort of, in our minds, sort of conjure up, well, talk to God about them. Because if you talk to God about them, you'll be amazed at the correction he will bring to your thinking. You'll be amazed at the correction that he will bring to the ideas that you have and the things that you're pursuing in your mind. Talk to God about them. Um, you know, when, when once you talk to him about it, Again, sometimes it, it, things just correct themselves the moment they come out of, out of your mouth. Kind of interesting reality. It's the way it is. Verse 4. You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means an enmity against God? Don't you know that? Question mark. I don't know. 
Not sure I've known that. I would have lived my life a lot different. But now I'm being reminded that it is. Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Or do you think that the scripture says without reason that he jealously longs for the spirit that he's caused to dwell in us? He longs for us. He's jealous for us. Oh, a jealous God. Like, what's that about that he's a jealous God? I thought we weren't supposed to be jealous. Well, there's a good jealousy. You see, that's when if you marry somebody, you want that person to be just for you. You don't want to share them. You don't stand before the altar and you say, um, you know, I will take you and you only for the rest of my life. You don't say, and I will take you and you only, except like maybe just once or twice, you know, at the course of my, my life, you know, you know, somebody else, you know, maybe even just for a short little period of time, if that's right. Well, of course not. It, it's just, it's to him. Our fidelity is to him and he wants us. And he doesn't want us to have a wandering eye. He doesn't want us to have wandering thoughts. He, he, he is jealous for us. It's him him and us. And so all of these attractions of the world, it's just him and us. And the amazing thing is that when we put him first, he gives us all this amazing stuff anyway. So, But he gives us more grace. That's good. I'm glad about that. That's why the scripture says that God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Well, I know what it's been like in my life sometimes to not have God bless me. Just feel like he's not blessing me. And that's not a pleasant place to be where you feel like, you know, where's the blessing of God? You know, he's not here. But how about this one? How about God opposing you? Man, I don't want God opposing me. Are you kidding me? I don't, I don't want God opposing me. He shows favor. He gives blessing to the humble. You know, realizing who I am, realizing who God is, just live our lives simply. Submit yourself then to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee. How hard is it to submit to God? Come near to God and he'll come near to you. I'll come near to you, Lord, and you'll come near to me. Wash your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. Just keep your mind on God. Put him first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. Then he says this. For those of us who are going the other way and trying to find satisfaction, we will never, ever find satisfaction. Grieve and mourn and wail. Change your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom. Humble yourselves before the Lord and he'll lift you up. Humble yourself before God. Brothers and sisters, don't slander one another. Well, that's what we do when, you know, we think somebody else is getting something that we deserve or something that should be happening to us. We, we slander that person. Just another way of doing these quarrels and these wars and these fights among us. You know, we're cutting, cutting other people down. Anyone who speaks against their brother or sister or judges them speaks against the law and judges it. Yeah, we're just as guilty. When you judge the law, you're not keeping it, but you're sitting in judgment of it. There's only one lawgiver and judge, Jesus, the one who's able to save and to destroy. But you, who are you to judge your neighbor? Really, like who am I to judge my neighbor? You know, and in judging, you're judging somebody's motives, why they're doing things, what they're about, what's going on in their lives. Um, you don't know. You don't know. That's not... Let's not be the judge. Let, let God be the judge. Verse 13. Now listen, you who say, it might be me. Today or tomorrow, we're going to go to this city, that city, spend a year there and carry on some business and make some money. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go do this. These are our plans. This is what we're going to do. Why, you don't even know what will happen tomorrow. What's your life? You're like a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it's the Lord's will, we'll live on and do this or that. As it is, you boast in your arrogant schemes. All boasting is evil. If anyone knows what to do is good and doesn't do it, it's sin for them. You know, it's so easy to make plans and think that this is going to happen and that's going to happen. I've had a whole year of, you know, all kinds of plans and didn't work out at all. You know, I thought I was in control. I thought I was the one that was making everything happen. But these things weren't happening at all. From, um, you know, I was 67 years old before I ever landed in a hospital. Never been in a hospital. And I'd made some big plans and was doing some things with some people and some church planters and taking them around and doing all these great things for God, supposedly. 
And I got sick and landed in a hospital. And then that whole year, I was like in and out of the doctors in the hospital. I'd never been to the doctors, never been to the hospital. Well, I had all these plans, I had all these things. It's all in my calendar. You know, I'm laying there in a the hospital bed, opening up my calendar, looking at all the things that I'm not doing that I put on it that I was going to do. Hey, my life is my own. You know, I don't know what's going on in my life. But, uh, you know, I can, I can make my plans, but it's really God that's in control. And so, you know, all this, uh, we should say this. And I'm learning to say it now. I'm learning to say it. If it's the Lord's will, we'll do this. If anyone then knows what they ought to do and doesn't do it, for them it's sin. We call this sins of commission and sins of omission. A sin of commission is when you know you're not supposed to do something and you go ahead and do it. Um, a sin of omission is when you know you should do something and you don't do it. So uh, let's just submit ourselves to God, humble ourselves, and he'll lift us up. Hey, bless you guys. Thanks for going on a journey together. It's a lot of fun. Hey, bless you.